Okay, let's uh, check out uh, Dan's video. What's up, everyone? Hey! Big Dan here. Oh, Jesus, there he is. He's up in the corner. Uh, I gotta... I gotta put myself, like, over here, then. He wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> and today we are doing the ultimate Mass Effect squad mate tier list okay now i'm going to be judging these characters sort of on a sliding scale there are a lot of big dan mates in the mass effect trilogy but obviously i'm not going to put like 15 of them on the s tier so i'll be kind of judging characters against one another so if one of your favorite characters maybe falls into the a tier or the b tier it's because i'm comparing them against the entire roster of squad mates in this trilogy now we're going to be tackling the squad mates in basically the order that they appear in the games, uh, starting with Mass Effect 1. So the first squad mate we'll be looking at is actually Caden Alenko. Now Caden's uh, one of the blander squad mates in the trilogy, in my opinion. I've never been a huge fan of Caden. I mean, he has some interesting things about him, like in True. terms of his biotic training at Jump Zero and whatnot. And he can have somewhat of a compelling arc if you romance him as a Femshep character and then keep him alive in Mass Effect 2 and 3, mm -hmm. um, similar to Ashley's arc. But overall, I'm going to have to put Caden in the C tier overall. I yeah, I have to agree with him. He's uh, like Caden is somewhat like um, he's not bad. He's not the worst squad mate at all but he's just bland he's boring i don't know what it is about him his voice acting is really good uh so that's not the problem i just think he's his character arc is just meh i don't know why it's just <laughs> i think every other romance option squad mate are they're just more interesting but he's not the worst uh definitely not there is another character that is even worse than Caden. I think you guys know which one that is. I just think when you compare him to the other squad mates in the trilogy, he just doesn't quite stack up. Now, next up is Ashley. Now, Ashley's one who has kind of, uh, my opinion of hers changed over the years. I would say initially on my first one or two playthroughs, I actually liked Ashley's character a lot. Um, I liked her sort of take no shit kind of uh, attitude and whatnot. And the fact that if you play as a paragon and romance her, you can actually shift her opinions about aliens. But that's over true. Over time, I've come to get a little bit more annoyed with Ashley. I kind of find her personality to be somewhat grating at times, and I don't <laughs> enjoy what she brings to the table quite as much as I used to. So no. just like Caden, we are going to slot Ashley into the C tier. Yeah, she's just, she's, they kind of belong in the same place because as he said, a, a, Ashley doesn't have to stay like a complete asshole towards other species. You can't change her. Uh, because she's more or less like, uh, you know, she's just worried about humanity as a race. But, uh, you know, she changes throughout the trilogy if you want to. But then again, she's kind of, uh, it's hard It's hard to, to like her in the first game. I gotta admit, it's, you gotta really try uh, getting into her as a person. And then it, in the third game, for some reason, I just hate how she looks. She just looks like a like one of those Hollywood wives, you know, <laughs> gone wrong. I just hate how she looks. So next up, we have our boy Garrus Vicarian. Now, I know it, you know it. Mr. Man, Sun, Trim Bean, Bridget Follow. Oh yeah, probably one of the best companion characters ever written in a video game, in my yep. opinion. Garrus is absolutely phenomenal. Don't really need to spell out why, but I will. Um, his arc is very interesting over the course of three games, going from mm -hmm. sort of this jaded CSEC officer to a, you know, running a mercenary group on Omega, taking out the other gangs that are selling drugs and trafficking slaves. The interesting thing about that, I'm just going to pause him. Garrus is actually more or less, he's not really, I wouldn't say that he's jaded. Uh, in Mass Effect 1, he's more innocent in that game because you're molding him. If you, if you didn't know this, if you talk to him, uh, depending on what, if you choose to be renegade or paragon about it, you know, if you if you want to push him towards being more uh, self-sufficient, being more rebellious, you know, taking things into his own hands, he will become, I don't know 
maybe more jaded. I don't know. I'm Swedish, so I have a trouble understanding the words. But I would say that he's more innocent. And then that's why I think his arc is so much more believable and why it's so great. Because he can turn out to be like this, you know, rebellious kind of, you know, Batman type of character. But he can also turn out to be more of a, you know, he follows Shepard's steps, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's continue. Uh, to then leading the uh, Turian resistance against the Reapers in Mass Effect 3. Such an interesting character. Uh, I love his banter with Shepard, particularly if you play as a male character. And then, of course, his romance with Fem Shep is phenomenal as well. And also, he just has a lot of great banter with other squad mates, particularly in Mass Effect 3. So you just can't top Garrus, in my opinion. Garrus is an easy S tier. Uh, well, kind of, uh, I mean, there are others that are S tier, definitely. So I don't think he's necessarily the best one of all of them, but he's, he's, he's the best, um, he's one of the best, if that's how you say it. Going along the same theme, we have Rex. So again, yeah. Rex is an easy S tier pick for me. One thing I wish we would have gotten a little bit more screen time with him in Mass Effect 2 and 3. He does make a lot. Uh, he does make a long appearance in Mass Effect 3, but it's a character who we didn't get to spend quite as much time with as compared to ones like Garrus, Tally, and Liara, his other companion squad mates from Mass Effect 1. But Rex is just phenomenal. Uh, I love he, he has so many great moments um, throughout the entire trilogy. I love the way he always gives other characters a hard time, particularly Shepard and Garrus and Liara. You know, I just love the banter that he has with everybody. And, you know, he was really the one pushing the Krogan into a more progressive direction, um, trying yeah. to kind of make them more respectable amongst the rest of the galactic races and make it so that they weren't just out He's the one who changes the entire Krogan really uh, interesting about his culture character. in the end, basically. So next up, we have T Tally. Oh, there she goes. I wonder where she is. <laughs> but yeah, Rex is, is an absolute big bro. It's like whenever you have him with you, you just feel invincible. That's why I love him so much. He just feels like this kind of big brother that... And Garrus sort of feels like your little brother, if you're playing male chef, that is. Or if you, you choose not to romance him as female chef. It's like, they're your brothers. Uh, the 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 one is this, like younger brother. One is an older brother. Both of them complement Shepard really well. Let's continue. Tally. Tally. And here we go again. This is another S tier. Of Very course. easy to put her in the S tier. Tally's absolutely phenomenal. Now, interestingly enough, I didn't gravitate to Tally initially uh, in my first playthrough Me of neither. the game, but later on when I did Tally's Romance in Mass Effect 2 and 3, I came to like this character a lot more. Um, I love her sarcasm, I love mm -hmm. her loyalty, and you know, she just brings a lot to the table and obviously cares a lot about her people, the Koreans, but yeah. also is open-minded to change and making peace with the Geth, particularly after her interactions with Legion. So Tally's a phenomenal Yeah, character. her story with obviously. Legion is absolutely amazing. Like how they start off like almost hating each other. Legion is, of course, you know, he doesn't really care because they don't really care. Uh, they're more curious just than anything. Uh, but then she she has this deep hatred for for the Geth, of course, because you know, and Tally like just like Big Dan, like I didn't like her from the start. She was someone I had to grow into liking, and that's why I kind of based that song that I released just recently with my music producer uh, that I wanted it to like display that she's not this innocent girl that a lot of people thought she was gonna be, but she turns into a very mature. Uh, she 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 is much more intense than you would actually think and more complicated than just an innocent, you know, uh, girl uh, that Shepard meets that falls in love with, you know, male Shepard, if you play as male Shepard. This S tier. Next up, we have Liara. And again, this one's going to be another easy S tier uh, pick for me. Now, for a while, I probably would have said that Liara was my hmm. favorite character, maybe top two. Um kind of hard to top Garrus for me personally, but uh, Liar is absolutely phenomenal. And I think particularly her arc with Lair of the Shadow Broker in particular and going into Mass Effect 3 is really phenomenal. Whether you romance her or not, the story arc she takes throughout Mass Effect 1, 
2 with Lair of the Shadow Broker, and then Mass Effect 3, super great. I think Liara is a great character as Shepard's friend or as a romantic partner. So, you know, Liara is just phenomenal. Obvious S tier. Here's the thing. She was my favorite character uh, before the Legendary Edition. And it's quite, you know, it's obvious. She's fucking cute. <laughs> like there's no one in the game that beats her just, you know, appearance wise. She's just, you know, she's the blueberry waifu. There, There's nothing, um, you know, appearance wise that you can groan at. Uh, she was also very heavily, uh, you know, covered in that Fox News section about how, you know, the sex scene with uh liara is you know <laughs> it's huge and she was basically one of my first crushes in gaming i think the thing is as you guys said here uh like liara me one not the rest she grows cold that's true like the first mass effect one liara is definitely uh wait no the first and third so uh, liara and mass effect one and liara and mass effect three are my favorites i think I like her best in three because in two, as you said, she grows like super cold and I don't really like uh, the direction they took with her during the second game, maybe towards the end there for a layer of the shadow broker. But when you're reintroduced to Liara before that DLC, she's cold. She, I, I don't like, like how she looks, uh, which they obviously fixed in the layer of the shadow broker. And then they kept her appearance. The one we see here, uh, to mass effect three. And then in mass effect three, I just think she grows warmer again, but there's just something about her voice that she kind of sounds bored at times. And I think that's why she fell from, from grace for me. <laughs> White Tally, you know, took the lead uh, when it comes to like female characters. It's just she, she, I didn't realize that until recently that Liara always sounds so fucking bored. <laughs> Um, so now we got Jacob. We're into Mass Effect Morgan, 2 here. Morgan, thanks for the follow. And, um, Moving target. Thank you. For Jacob, I think we're actually going to have to add a new <laughs> row. <laughs> Seriously? Here, we're going to call this row... Uh, we're going to call this... Vent God. Vent so, God. So, Jacob's the Vent God. You always got to <laughs> send him into the vents in Mass Effect 2. <laughs> he volunteers for the job. And you know what? We're not going to deny Jacob the opportunity to, you know, help us out by going into the vents in the collector base. You know, Jacob takes a lot of shit, and honestly, I just think it's because overall his character is fairly bland, doesn't show a lot of personality, and even, you know, he just comes off as very boring. I mean, even when he's telling a story about how Cerberus stopped an assassination attempt on the council. He makes that sound boring. I don't know how he does it. His loyalty mission is really good, but other than that, his character just kind of falls flat in this trilogy and, you know, it just doesn't, he just doesn't stack up to the other ones. He really needed some rewrites <laughs> to make him yeah. a little bit more interesting. Um, maybe having a different voice actor, even someone who could bring a little bit more flair to the character. Um, would have made him more interesting. But the prize. We get, what we, we get what we get, and Jacob is the vent god. So next up we... So, okay, before Miranda. All right, so, <clears throat> yeah, Jacob is somebody who I kind of... So as he, as Dan says, the, uh, the loyalty mission is actually pretty good. Uh, that was the only time where I felt like, ah, oh, this is actually pretty sad. This is heartfelt, you know? You know, with his father being an asshole that's like stuck on an island or on a planet and he's like using women. He has an he has an entire harem, you know, and he controls them. So I uh I feel yeah, that his his story kind of sucks, you know, in, in that regard. But then just the character overall, there's just something about him is just super bland. And then he cheats on Shepard if you <laughs> romanced him as Fem Shep, which sucks ass, which makes him even worse. It's not, you know, it's not like, oh, we can't forgive him for that. But it's just, he's just generally boring. You know, even if that's, that kind of sort of drama can be interesting, you know, for a relationship in a game, it's still, his character is just, eh, it's just you don't care really. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. His loyalty mission, fine. 
Everything else, meh. We got Miranda. Um, <clears throat> Miranda's a character who I initially didn't like very I much. I put her when on I Mass Effect 2. A. But she grew on me over time um, when you really get to dig because... into her backstory and how she was trying to sort of like overcome the expectations that her father placed on her and the pressure that her father placed on her. And um, also She's a perfect protect human. her own sister from going down that same dark path. She ends up being a very interesting character, um, you know, a character who was genetically engineered to be perfect, but um, is really just a human being like everybody else, has their own flaws, has their own, you know, blind spots and whatnot. Initially, she's a little bit too into Cerberus, I think, and perhaps that was a way for her to kind of uh, shape her own identity by latching onto this organization. But over time, she comes to recognize um, the drawbacks of being a part of Cerberus. So, oh, he's placing an RA. Say Miranda is an A just like me. Mate. She doesn't quite yeah, stack so... up to the the high level, the S tier squad mates, but you got to put Miranda in A tier. Yeah, so she's memorable just because of the fact that she's perfect. And, you know, of course, the infamous butt shot, her ass is just, you know, <laughs> it's immortalized in the universe of Mass Effect. Everybody who thinks of Mass Effect is at some point going to think of Miranda's butt. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the reasons. But then she's also played by Yvonne Strahovski, who is just amazing. She's just awesome as a, as a voice actress and an actress. Yeah, her story isn't... I don't know, maybe it's just because she wasn't uh, with you from the start that she's not an S tier. I think we, sh we, sh we should have gotten more time with her, especially in the third game, because she wasn't really in the game much. Even if you romanced her, like the fact that you have to, it's like the same with Jack, that you have to say goodbye to them through like a hologram, which is just, eh. it's unfortunate because <clears throat> anyone who romanced Miranda, um, and she is definitely like, for me, by far the best um, human romance. Uh, so I think that's just unfortunate that you can't really have a real goodbye with her. I was hella disappointed with Jack and Mira in ME3. Yeah, like it's super unfortunate because if they had just gotten more time, I think they I, they would have placed on S for me too. Anyway, let's continue. If you're making a list with me. Uh, so next up we got Zaid. Now, Zaid's absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorite characters in the He's in cool, the series. but he's a B he's for a me. He's a little one-dimensional overall, but yeah. I, I still absolutely love him. I think uh, the... Aspects of him going after Vito Santiago are just kind of hilarious. I love his loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2. And it's hilarious too because even if you allow Vito to escape during his loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2, he tracks the guy down while Shepard's under house arrest and kills him. So, you know, Zaid, he's got some great one-liners. He's he has a lot of great quips in the series. And for me, he Zaid's does. an A character. Um, okay. Also, absolutely phenomenal voice. That's actor generous. By the legendary Robin Sachs. Yeah, I gotta put I gotta put Zaid in A tier. So yeah, so it's unfortunate that Robin passed away because I would have liked to see him again. But the thing is, as he was an extra character, I just never really got that close to Zaid. I liked him just because of his renegade nature overall, but I just um I don't know. I I just never really engaged that much with him. Um, he has an interesting story in that he is the one who founded the Blue Suns, which is cool. So he's like the the leader. He was the original leader for that gang. So he's even an even being bigger character and more important character than you might think. But I just uh, never really vibed with him. Uh, and then again, you know, he's sort of an extra character in Mass Effect 3. You don't even have to talk to him, really. He's just there. <laughs> if you want to, to like, uh, engage with him, sort of like in the Citadel DLC, which is unfortunate again. But yeah, he's kind of like a background character, unfortunately. He's really well done, and Robin Zax, you know, Sax, uh, did a really great job, you know, with his voice acting. But uh, Zaid trying to clip clap milf cheeks in the Citadel Sea with Samara. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Samara, we gotta talk about her as well. Okay, let's let's jump forward. Next up we have Morden Solis. Morden. Um, as far as the new squad mates hey. in Mass Effect 2 go, For me. Morden is probably my favorite one. I absolutely really? love his character arc, going from somebody who worked on the Genophage modification project to then later on having some regrets about the work that he did 
and trying to make amends for it in Mass Effect 3. Also just has a lot of great uh, dialogue with Shepard, particularly in Mass Effect 2. I love all of the uh, romantic advice that you can get from Morden, uh, it, you know, if you're in a romance in that game. Totally hilarious. Love Morden's he character. Is. Also, great artist. <laughs> can sing, write, do all these other fun things. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of a bummer uh, how his whole thing turns out in Mass Effect 3. Uh, you can save him, but even if you do uh, go the route where you save Morden, you don't really get to spend a whole lot of time with him after that. But in the end, Morden is a clear S tier for me. I think the problem for me is that Morden is a Solarian. <laughs> As much as I find them funny, I'd never really, again, like I, I'd never really vibed with Morden. So for me, I would, I would put him on A. So as you said there, he would be like a high A tier, but not an S tier. Even if like his story is super tragic when he like sacrifices himself to, to stop the genophage, which is like really cool. He's, his, his story is really one of the better ones. It's just unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate that he's a Solarian. So yeah, you know, it's it's just I don't know. There there's something about the Solarians that I've just never really liked. They're just so so, so skittish. <laughs> I guess that's it. But Morden is by far the best Solarian there is. So I would put him on high A or between S and A if that's possible. But yeah, his advice is just the best. His romantic advice is just hilarious. He's by far one of the funniest characters in Mass Effect. I'd say. Now I've realized as I've been putting these on the, the board here that I haven't actually been like ordering them. So maybe I should do that. We're gonna, we're gonna shift a few of these characters around so I can show you. Oh, right. Um, this is probably accurate for me, for S tier. I would say this is, this is the order I'd put. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do Garrus number one, Rex number two, Tally number three, Liara number four, and then Morden. Um, so maybe a little bit more mindful as I'm placing the rest of these, you know, these are the exact order that I want them to be. So next up we have Kasumi. Mm -hmm. um, Kasumi's relatively interesting. I like her backstory. She's um, B for me. She's a very different character compared to the rest of the squad mates that we get owing to her, you know, basically being uh, a criminal hustler, you know, thief. Really bringing in sort of like a Dungeons and Dragons style rogue into the Mass Effect trilogy, which I think is kind of interesting. You know, I, I don't think she stacks up quite as well to the rest of the cast in the trilogy, in my opinion. Um, I do like the decision you get to make during her loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2 with KG's Grey Box. And even her loyalty mission in, in Mass Effect 3 is, I guess, well, it's not really a loyalty mission per se, but the mission where you and her work with John Dumbau uh, to uncover a plot, a Hanar plot to basically take down the Hanar homeworld. That, that mission's really interesting overall. So I'm going to put Kasumi in the B tier. Here's the thing, um, right? I wish Kasumi, I, I find her really cute and I find her very, you know, she's, she's a... She's a charming character, and I wish, again, that there was more time to get to know her, because she just doesn't have that much screen time, to be honest, in the entire game. Just like Miranda, you know, she she needed more time to shine. One thing that I wish they could have added was, like, a way to make her take off her, um, her, her cowl or her hoodie, which would have been nice to see, you know, how she looks like under there, for real. And um, then also kind of, I, I say this about a lot of characters, but she, she should have been a romance option, definitely. I think that would have made her grow much more. If she, like she had the potential to be an S tier character because of her voice actress, because of her, her story, uh, because of her like tragic circumstances. Uh, but I, I just think that, you know, she needed more time and she should have been a romance option. That's, and we should have been able to, take down or like change her skin or change her suit so she you know pulled away her her cowl so she is definitely a b tier for me too next up we got grunt shepherd's son so <laughs> i know it you know it we all know it grunt is s tier absolute s tier yeah one of my favorite characters in the trilogy I mean, he's, he's the bomb so 
fun. Uh, he, he provides a lot of comic relief. Sometimes he's uh, unintentionally hilarious. Yeah. At least he doesn't think he's being hilarious, but uh, comes off that way anyway. Particularly like his interactions in the Citadel DLC in Mass Effect 3. And um, man, that scene in Mass Effect 3 where he essentially is offering to sacrifice himself to allow Shepard and the crew to escape the Rachni lair. I mean, that one always hits me in the feels. Even if he survives it at the end, yeah. he will if you complete his loyalty mission. That always just, that always gets me. So Absolutely yeah, S-tier. day, Grunt yeah. is an easy S-tier. Yeah, Next easy. Next up, we've got easy. Jack. I gotta stop there because I gotta talk. <laughs> Talk about Grunt. Like the Grunt is such a simple character that like that that's why I almost forgot to talk about it because he's just so simply perfect, just as a character overall. He's he's really tough. He is like the son to uh, to Shepard's, you know, sort of like how Rex is the big brother. Uh Grunt is just so he's badass, but he's cute and is innocent at the same time. He wants to prove himself to be a pure Krogan and you know. He is honorable. He he um he offers to, as he said, sacrifice himself to just save Shepard. It's it's pretty apparent that he has a love for his squad, for the Normandy squad, and for Shepard, especially especially in the third game. He's just so personable and absolutely like super hilarious, uh, even without you know even trying. He's the ultimate Krogan. It makes me happy to know that he will likely return in the next Emmy. Yeah, he's definitely on the contender list. Him and Rex, because Krogan as many people seem to forget, don't have a natural age where they die, which the Asari have. So Asaris sort of have a lifespan of, I think, 1,500 years. That's basically it, or 1,000 years. They're, they're, that's usually how long they can live before they die of just, I don't know, organ failure. But the Krogan don't have a limit to how old they can be. That's not at least... They've never said that they have an, a max age. And that's like, um, what's his name? Uh, Drax huh? in Andromeda. He's like 1,500 years old. He's like the oldest character in Mass Effect ever. Yeah, seeing... Oh, well, his name is not Drax, is it? What is it? Drac! Yeah. So they're, I think they're on the runner-up. And it's, you know, from the poster uh, for the next Mass Effect, the official poster, they also showed, like, the Krogan and the Krogan has a red armor. Why would anyone not think that that's Rex or Grunt maybe who's like been given the armor by Rex I don't know but it would be weird that it's not one of those um Jack was a character who I connected with really quickly when I was playing Mass Effect 2 for the first time obviously mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal voice acting from Courtney Taylor Courtney also voices the main character in Fallout 4 um does a lot of tremendous work but man she had a she has I a hot voice Jack. I love <laughs> That's for how sure. How much of a badass she is. I love how much of a take no shit kind of person she is. Um, but also that she's kind of putting on some of that stuff as a front to overcome the trauma that she underwent as, as a child. So very deep and layered character. Yeah, she's super tortured. I would say she's amongst my all-time favorites as, as far as the trilogy goes. But um, I would say she easily slots into the A tier and... I would say I'd even probably put her over Miranda just because her character arc, I think, is a bit more interesting and, and dynamic, you know, just in terms of everything that she went through, you know, going from this life of like hedonism and crime and all of that stuff to then changing up her identity and kind of forging her own path in the Alliance, training other biotic students. I just find That's that a good to point. Be incredibly interesting and compelling. I never really thought about that. I always just, whenever I think of Jack, I always think about how she's this kind of rebellious bitch <laughs> for some reason. I have tried romancing her. I've never done a full romance with her, though. I gotta be honest about that. I think, at least. But if I did, maybe that was a long time ago, but I don't remember that I did. But I do know that she softens up a lot, and that's really... I really like how... Like, how sort of adorable her 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 story is she goes from this super tortured woman who just can't really get over what Cerberus did to her until she like finds forgiveness maybe depending on what you do as Shepard and then she of course falls head over heels for Shepard and they have this their relationship is kind of hilarious in that way that where she's like super <laughs> aggressive I just love it but yeah so she's somewhere between S and A for me too I find her 
I think she's sort of equal for me when it comes to her and Miranda. So I would place them basically on the same uh, position. Because Miranda, I find her story to be pretty tragic as well. You know, being designed as a perfect human, nobody really understands her. She she doesn't really want to be perfect, but we're talking about Jack now. So I, I like their d dynamic, you know, they have, she, she misunderstands Miranda, Miranda misunderstands Jack. I just wish that they had more time together in the third game. That would be cool, you know, seeing them become really close friends. We see something of that, like, in the Citadel DLC, but I wish there was even more. That would be fucking cool. Anyway. So next up, we have Thane. Thane! Now, Thane's a total badass. Um, I, I really like Thane. He's the drip god. He's the assassin god. And, uh, yeah, man, I, I absolutely love Thane as a character. I also think it's interesting the, the kind of uh, window he gives us into Drell culture. You know, some of the stories he can share because he has literally picture perfect memory as all Drell do. Um, makes him quite an interesting character to interact with. You know, how he's trying to sort of um, make up for the mistakes of his past. Obviously has a very dark and dirty job as an assassin, he's done a lot of bad things, but also eliminated a lot of bad people along the way and is trying to make sure that his son doesn't go on the same uh, path that he did. Um, so overall, I would put Thane as an A-tier character, not quite S-tier. I wouldn't quite put him up there in, among the all-star cast of the trilogy, but he's very close to that, I would say. Okay, so Thane is one of those characters where I have to say that um, I understand the reasons why people like him so much, uh, just because of his, you know... Uh, fatal disease and he dies in the third game no matter what you do especially his fight against Kai Leng is pretty cool it's just sort of bullshit to me that Kai Leng would win that fight but okay he was sick you know okay he got he got his ass kicked by cripple I just never again I just never really vibed with Thane for some reason I think it might be because a lot of um, Femshep players I know love uh, Thane isn't he like, I think he's the second most beloved romance option um, for Femsheps, you know, right after Garrus. But I don't know, there, there's just something about his his work history as an assassin. It's just a little too grimdark for me. <laughs> but then again, Jack is also kind of the same way where she's also like this very dark person, but she does it as a self-defense mechanism, whereas Thane is so dark and his history is so dark that it's so depressing for some reason. I just can't really get into the groove of his character because I just feel like he's way too he's way too troubled and then you feel sorry for him that he has this sickness and everything is just shit and everything just sucks. It's like <laughs> I just, I can't with Thane. <clears throat> and that's why whenever I play ro uh, like Femshep, I can't romance him because I just, I just feel like I, I don't fall in love with this character. I feel more like I, I just pity you. <laughs> so whenever you have like your romance with him, it feels like you're pity fucking him. And I just, I don't like that. So that's why I prefer Garrus all day, every day. It's just, <laughs> I just like his positive positivity more and his like, you know, he's, he's just, it's just a different kind of thing. And unfortunately, the, th the thing is, I gotta admit though, that Thane's death scene is one of the saddest parts of Mass Effect. I admit, I, I almost get teary eyed every time. But it's not because I feel like oh, I, I, you know, I love him as a character. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad. It's just sad. <laughs> yeah, it's like a nurse falling in love with a patient. True. But I, I just, I can never see myself at that, as that nurse. Thanks. Wendigo, I hate how Shepard Thane romance boils down to, oh, your wife died? Let's fuck. <laughs> yes. It's a solid A-tier character. So next up, we've <clears> got <throat> Samara. Now, uh, I don't really resonate a whole lot with Samara. There's something about what? characters who are very flat in terms of their personality, like characters who do not make jokes or express anything other than maybe like stoicism or maybe sadness, maybe anger. Um, those characters just never really resonate with me personally. Also, I don't typically like characters who are always like adhering to this rigid code for the sake of like 
just for the sake of having a code. I've been replaying Glo Ghost of Tsushima recently, and some of the characters in that game who are like rigidly adhering to a samurai code, that shit can get exhausting <laughs> uh, listening to those That is characters. true. So honestly, um, I would put Samara in the C tier. Mm. Um, somewhere, I'll, I'll put her between Ashley and Caden. Um, yeah, I just, overall, uh, you know, I don't think she's a, an awful character. Big Dad, uh, how dare you? Some of her background and her mission is interesting, but at the end of the day, I, I just don't like her as much as the other characters in the trilogy. Here's the thing. I disagree, but it's fine. You know, we have different opinions. Most of these we've actually been somewhat on the same page about, especially the S tier. But I think Samara should be on A tier easily, just because... Yes, she has this rigid sort of samurai code and like Ghost of Tsushima, she kind of reminds me of a samurai that way, but I think they're much more rigid, if anything, in Ghost of Tsushima than she is. Or, well, the, some of the characters in Ghost of Tsushima are just automatically much more boring than her characters in Mass Effect. Um, Samara, even if she has this rigid code, she still has a really complex story. I love how you can almost romance her, basically. You can share a kiss with her. Uh, I wish there was more to that, you know, having sort of a Liara-esque romance scene where you <laughs> clap them cheeks. <laughs> Unfortunately, because, you know, she's the only MILF in the game. So <laughs> it's unfortunate you couldn't go that far. But I just like her um, her story of having to kill her own daughters because of this Asari code that we don't necessarily understand uh, ourselves because, you know, Asari, they're not humans. They have a different culture somewhat. Uh, so it's it's a really interesting thing seeing this kind of thing where it's super religious, but you kind of, it's such a different religion they have uh, in a sorry culture with the justy cars and whatever. I, I, I don't know. I just like her. She's, um, she's a milf. <laughs> I love her voice acting. She's, you know, it's Billie Eilish mom. How can you, how can you not like that? <laughs> I'm so fucking right. Ale yeah. Ale yeah. <laughs> Dad had a stinker there. That's this first stinker. <laughs> Most of them are, are somewhat right. Would switch a few places, but Samara, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm, nah, nah. I noticed that Morinth was not on this tier list, but I do want to talk about Morinth in the context. Oh, of and right, yes, Morinth, and the fact that when you uh, when you do finally face Morinth and Samara goes against her own daughter, I find that kind of heart tugging. I feel I feel her like about that. You know, she Morinth is. I think Mor Morinth is the key that makes Samara work because Morinth is such a heinous character in herself. She's like the yin to. Samara's Yang and the fact that she has to kill her own daughter just to save people. Um, I, I find that like just redeeming, you know, even if she's not the funniest character in overall. Lol, I just commented on your thing from yesterday saying more streams. Well, here you go. But most of these streams that I do on Twitch, they're going to be just for Hangouts. So the playthrough for the Legendary Edition, I'm going to keep on YouTube because I don't want to mix up the, the content too much. Uh, D tier, yeah, I would put her beneath Vent God. I actually dislike Morinth more than I dislike Jacob because she's such a monster. <laughs> or well, they're basically on the same tier, I'd say character so i'll probably uh yeah she's not flat at all samara post. Um, <laughs> she's not flat but what do we say about morinth i would probably put morinth in the d tier mostly because she's <laughs> an incredibly one-dimensional character and um obviously was a hell of a lot less fleshed out because she's kind of a rare squad mate like there's very specific circumstances you have to accomplish in Mass Effect 2 in order to have the opportunity to recruit Morinth and you have to betray and kill Samara in order to do it. So a lot Yeah, of there's players, not a lot uh, to get from killing Samara. That. I've only done it on one one or two playthroughs, I think. Um I yeah, I did it in one of my uh, live stream playthroughs just kind of as a joke, but overall uh her like just relentless pursuit of like hedonism and like complete disregard for other people like basically psychopathic or sociopathic behavior uh, makes her not very likable overall 
And um, again, because Bioware didn't flesh her out as much because they knew a lot of people were not going to use her as a squad mate. And the fact that she doesn't really even make an appearance in 3, aside from a couple of emails, and the fact that she gets converted into a Banshee at the end of the game. Yeah, I gotta put uh, Morinth in the D tier. Morinth just sucks. It's just facts. That That's a complete yes for me. That's just, <laughs> she's the worst. Absolutely the worst. So next up we've got Legion. Now I have a little bit of uh, conflicting feelings about Legion because again, it's one of these characters that we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with. Overall, True. I, I want to put him in the A tier, but I also kind of lean towards the B tier. At the end of the day, I think just because he's, he's more interesting because he's a Geth and because we get to see sort of his character arc basically developing his own individuality by the end of Mass Effect 3. But man, we get him so late in the game in Mass Effect 2 that you can barely use him. Um, I know Bioware initially was planning the game so that you could recruit all the squad mates earlier. They even have some like dialogue that you can still access in the game if you use mods to add Legion to your squad earlier than the Reaper IFF. You can actually bring him to some of the recruitment missions from the early part of the game and loyalty missions and whatnot and actually get some unique dialogue with him. Um, so there was a plan to you know basically incorporate Legion into the whole game, but in the final release, you basically get him at the end of the game. I think I'll put him in the A tier just because, again, his whole backstory yeah. with the Geth makes him very interesting. But considering he has very limited dialogue and interactions that you can actually really see, um, I would I would lean towards the B tier. But at the end of the day, I got to put him at A. Uh yeah, so uh, Legion is by far one of my favorites just because, as Dad said, he's a Geth. So he's just automatically super interesting see if if you if you mod him into the game like if you uh, put use the save editor to recruit him earlier uh bringing him on basically every mission gives you some form of tidbit or opinion from his side or the geth side and because i did that back in the day uh on like my second playthrough just because i wanted to see i found him so interesting so on my second playthrough I used him on basically every mission, and that's why I love him so much, just because he has so much more to say than what we actually got at the end, because you're you're supposed to recruit him later in the game, and that's why you can't use him. But if you use the, the save editor, get him early, I would literally put him in S tier just for the sake of his unused material, which is not really unused, but since most people don't recruit him until later, it's sort of unused. Just because of that fact, I would put him on S tier uh, if they had actually kept his uh, his story sort of or his recruitment earlier. Just because he's so fucking cool, his opinions on everything or their opinions, because there's a bunch of Geth inside him. It's just they bring such a cool perspective. And since Mass Effect is mostly about this AI versus or synthetic versus organic uh, conflict, his story is just so very like it rings through the entire trilogy. And after fighting against the Geth for the whole first game, just having him as a squad mate is just, you know, it's it just makes you appreciate the story more. It makes the story and the lore deeper, I think. Uh, and just finding out that most Geth aren't assholes is just the best thing ever, too. And they have a good explanation for why he becomes your squad mate and why he's there and why he helps Shepard. It's just, you know, having an AI as a squad mate is just the best thing. Def definitely an underrated character. All right, next up, we've got James. James. Now, I did make a video defending James Vega, saying he's a better character um, than a lot of people think. And yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I still stand with that. I think mostly because he's introduced late into the franchise and probably wasn't introduced in the best way to really give you an opportunity to get to know him. I think a lot of players like myself missed out on some of the the better interactions that you can have with james throughout the the course of mass effect 3 um to really kind of like dig into his character but i think he's got a lot of interesting background in terms of his experience fighting against the collectors and how he had to basically 
uh, make a decision to either sacrifice his own unit in order to get some intel on the collectors or let that intel go, and just sort of how he developed as a soldier and into more of a leader uh, over the course of those experiences. And then again, because he's got, you know, he's got some funny quips, he's got some great banter with uh, Javik and James, or uh, Javik and James. He's got some great banter with Javik and Garrus in particular. Overall, I really like James Vega. So I would actually put Vega in the B tier. I would put him even ahead of uh, Ashley and Caden. I think he's quite an interesting character. But I just think we, because he was in introduced in Mass Effect 3, we didn't have the opportunity to get to know him like we did with some of these other squad mates. I would put him probably between B and A because as Dan said here too, like he is a much better character than people give him credit for. I think uh, if you use him a lot, you will you will get to know him pretty well. And he's just um, he's just a total bro. He's just it's just cool seeing this again another one of those you know little brother kind of types of characters who looks up to Shepard and wants to be like Shepard. But then you have different points of points of view and he's 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 more complicated than you would think i like uh, james a lot but that's also just he's he's just a complete homie i see vega and i gotta look for that goddamn pull-up bar <laughs> true it's so next up we have edie um i like edie i think she's an interesting character overall S -tier for you me. know going from uh basically confined to the ship ai in mass effect 2 to actually being uh having a part of her put into a body in Mass Effect 3. I like her relationship with Joker a lot, and I think that that can be very Yeah, he's going to place her on B. But overall, I don't think she's quite as interesting as a lot of the other squad mates on this list. So I'm going to actually put her in the B tier as well. I knew we'll it. put her above James. I knew it. Um, and we'll put her above Kasumi, actually, too. Okay. But she just doesn't quite stack up um, to the other squad mates, in my opinion. I like her, but just not the top. Mmm... Uh-uh. No, no, no. ED is easily one of my most used squad mates in Mass Effect 3. I pick her, I as much as I love Garrus, Rex, Tally, everyone, I always pick ED. ED is S. She's easily S tier because you have you hear her voice throughout the entire game in, in the second game, you know, Mass Effect 2. You, 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 it's, she's, she's the Normandy. Come on now, Dan. <laughs> She's another one of those. She's she's probably my, one of my <clears throat> biggest pet peeves when it comes to romances. I so wish that he could have romanced Edie because, you know, <sighs> come on now. She's a she's literally a sex bot. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to have her as a romance option? Her personality is great. Her 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 tries at being funny is awesome. She's just a big help to Shepard. She, she she goes from being a shackled AI to somebody who starts building an o, her own personality. Um, and she's not just the ship anymore. She's an actual person. She grows and grows. And just like Legion, she's an AI, which automatically makes her so much more interesting than a lot of the other characters just because of her different perspective. Uh, her small quips with Legion is just gold, and I wish we had gotten much more of that. Uh, yeah, steal Joker's girl. I don't give a fuck. Edie <laughs> should have been a romance option. So should have Joker also been, you know, because Joker is Joker. Everybody loves Joker, but ah, oh, man, I just love Edie. She always has something interesting to say. She, she's just, you know, she, she's just, you know, you know, you know, you get it, you, you get it. Last but not least, certainly not least, we've got Jovic, the Prothean <clears throat> slash Trollthean. Man, I love Jovic. Uh, I love all the 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 out the airlock jokes that and memes that the fans have come up with with him. Um, I love all of his quips. Throw it out the I love how he's like <laughs> the most extreme version of a renegade, basically who had his entire viewpoint shaped by the fact that he, you know, spent his whole his whole life fighting against the Reapers only to come back 50,000 years later. So, and he's not you know, even a scientist. He he's just a soldier. By being the last living Prothean or the last known living Prothean. And, you know, the insight that he can bring to that makes him inherently interesting. But his personality on top of that makes him even more interesting. So I would put Javik in the S tier. I'll put him just below Morden. Damn. And that's where Javik Before sits Before Grunt? Jav no. Dan, come on. I would put, yeah, Javik would probably be 
on I would switch Javik with um with ED and with Legion. I'd probably put Javik on 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 A tier. I love Javik, but I think yeah, he's not as memorable as the others. Maybe nah, I would actually put him on S tier. Him, I would put much <laughs> several more squad mates on S tier than I would. Uh, on any other tier, just because most of the ther characters in Mass Effect are just excellently written, except for this guy and this girl. I, I think uh, we have sort of the same opinions, but I would put several others on S. Avex phenomenal, probably my favorite character in Mass Effect 3, aside from squad mates that appeared earlier in the games, like, you know, Rex and Garrus and whatnot. So there you have it. The ultimate there we have Mass it. Effect squad mate tier list. Uh, let me know down in the comments where you guys would put your favorite squad mates and let me know if you agree or disagree with any particular placements on this list. This is just the list that I've come up with and I imagine that other brands of the franchise Crafty. will have different Appreciate the follow. than me as well. If you like... Alright guys, so if you haven't watched the video uh, yet, go and do so or at least leave a like for, for Big Dan. Uh, comment, let him know what you think. All that kind of jazz because we gotta support uh, the uh, the 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 biggest guy on uh, on Mass Effect right now. We gotta support each other. So go ahead and give him a like. But yeah, I agree with most of the, st the stuff he said. But uh, you know, it's it's fine to disagree. We we usually have the same opinion about basically everything. <laughs>